So far we've been looking at testing Django models in this series. We're now going to move on to a different component of the Django web framework and that's views. So views in Django are basically functions that take a web request and they return a web response. And in between that they perform any kind of logic, any kind of processing, for example, fetching data from your database or fetching data from a cache and then returning some kind of response. Usually that will be an HTML response or a JSON response if you have an API view. Now what we're gonna do is write a very simple view in our project. So I'm in the views.py file of this products application in Django. And what we're gonna do here is write a very simple view that I'm going to call homepage. And all Django views will take the request as a first parameter. And what we can return is just a template here. So I'm going to render a particular template and we use the render shortcut for that. And the render shortcut function takes the request as a first parameter as well. And then we can specify the name of a template. Now I've got a template here called index.html that I want to return, so I'm going to specify that. And it's as simple as that. If you just need to return a static HTML template, we can use the render function and return that from the Django view function. Once you have your view, you can then hook up a URL. So what I'm gonna do is go to the project urls.py file, and I'm just going to remove this comment at the top. And once we've removed that, we can add a new URL path to this Django application. And I'm gonna leave this empty so that it's just localhost 8000 or whatever your domain is. And then we can reference views.homepage. And of course we need to import views. So at the top from the products application, let's import that views.py file. And then we can reference the homepage view function. So now that we've done this, I'm gonna close urls.py and we're gonna take a look at index.html. So let's go to the templates directory that I've added here. And index.html, as you can see here, extends a base template and that's a common practice in Django applications. So if we look at base.html, we have this HTML boilerplate. Rather than writing this in every single template, what we do is we create the base file and then we create a content block and we can then extend base.html. So that's what we've done here and we have this content block and what I'm gonna do here is add an H1 tag. So we have products in this application. I'm going to add an H1 that says, welcome to our store. So let's imagine this is an e-commerce store. And that's a very basic Django template here. Nothing special going on, but we're setting things up so that we can start writing these tests. What I'm gonna do at the bottom is run python manage.py run server. And once the server is running, we can go to the browser now. And when we navigate to localhost 8000, we get that template response with the header tag that says, welcome to our store. So we now want to write some tests for this. So what I'm going to do is go back to VS Code and let's go to our test directory here. We've been testing models here with the testmodels.py file. Let's create a new one for testing views. I'm gonna call this testviews.py. And if we go back to test models, let's go to the top here. And what we're gonna do is import the test case from Django. And we can paste that into test views because of course we are going to use the test case class. Now what I also want to use is simple test case. So we're gonna cover that in this video. It's another test class that you can subclass in Django. So we're gonna have a quick look at that in this video as well. Now I want to go to the Django documentation on testing tools. And we're gonna look at things like the test client very soon. But if we go to the sidebar, what I want to look at at the moment is the provided test case classes that Django has. And this gives you an overview of the class hierarchy that Django provides for testing. So as we've seen in this series, normal unit test classes in Python will extend the unit test dot test case class and Django provides a few extensions of that base class. So you can see the hierarchy here. We have the unit test test case class at the top. Django's basic extension of that is called simple test case. We then have another class that extends simple test case and that's the transaction test case. And finally at the bottom here, the one we've been working with so far is the test case class. That's the most common in Django that itself will extend the transaction test case. And we also have a live server test case as well that extends the transaction test case. So that's the hierarchy of these. And the key difference between the simple test case and the ones below it is that the simple test case does not allow database access in Django. If you need to access the database, you're typically going to use the test case and you can use transaction test case if you need to test some transaction based functionality. Now, if we scroll down here to the simple test case, this is a direct subclass of unit test dot test case and it adds all of the functionality that you can see here. Examples include verifying that two URLs are equal or verifying that an HTTP redirect is performed by the app and so on. And one of the main things that the simple test case adds is this here, and that's the ability to use the Django test client. 
Now, if your test needs to make any database queries, you should use one of the other subclasses that are lower in the hierarchy, and that's the transaction test case or the test case. And typically it's going to be the test case class that you use. And the reason for this is that the simple test case is going to disallow database queries by default. And that comes again with some performance improvements. So if you don't need to hit the database, you can avoid creating that test database itself and also having those transactions being created and then rolled back at the end of each test. If you use the simple test case, it's not going to do any of that. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because if we go back to our application here, let's go back to views.py and let's look at this view that we've written here called homepage. All this is doing is returning a bit of static HTML. We don't have any context and we don't have any database queries going on in this view. And therefore, when we write a test for this view, we don't need to be hitting the database. So let's see an example of that just now. We've imported the simple test case here. Let's create a class and I'm gonna call that class test homepage and it's gonna inherit from the simple test case class that we've just been looking at. Now let's write a method here and that's a test case and let's call this one test homepage status code. And what we're gonna do here is also use the Django test client. And in any of the Django test case classes, you can get access to the test client using self.client. So we're gonna get a response here by calling self.client.get. And let's send a get request to that base route where we have the home page. So that's gonna give us back a response. We can then use self.assert equal, and the assert equal method is gonna take two parameters. So we want to take that response and access the status code property and we expect that to be equal to 200. Now let's test this out. So what I'm gonna do is go to the terminal at the bottom here and let's run python manage.py test and we get seven tests and we can see that all of these tests are passing. Now quite commonly, you'll only want to run a subset of the tests. So let's clear the terminal and bring back the test command. We can actually pass a path to the file that we want to run. So for example, in the products Django application, we have this tests directory. And if we only want to run the tests that are in test views.py, we can pass that in here. And you can see it's found the single test that we've defined in this class. And that's a useful method of cutting down the number of tests that you need to run. So if you have a big Django project that has thousands of tests, and you're testing this new thing that you might be working on, you can actually specify a subset of tests and that might make things run a lot quicker as your application grows. So we have this single test method at the moment. Let's add a second test method now. So as well as checking the status code, we can add a method here and it's called test homepage uses the correct template. And again, we're going to need to send a request to that URL. So let's copy that line of code into this new method. And in this method, we're gonna add a new assertion and that's the assert template used method. This is going to assert that the template with the given name was used in rendering the response. And this method is not on the unit test test case classes. This is something that the Django test classes are gonna add for you. And you can then check that the template is correct. And the name of our template is index.html. So that's the template, but we also need to pass the response into that. And basically we're taking the response and making sure that this is the template that was used. So let's save this and let's go back to the terminal and clear that out. And we're gonna rerun the command for these views. And we now have two tests and both are passing. And I want to add one final method here. So let's minimize the terminal and let's create a new method here. And we're gonna call it test homepage contains welcome message. So again, we're gonna to need to send that request to this URL here. And what we can do when we have a response is we can call a method that's called assert contains. And again, this is added by the Django test cases. And we can assert that the response contains a given piece of content. So if we go back to index.html, I'm gonna copy this welcome to the store message and we can pass that in here as a string. And that's gonna check that the response contains this text here. So what we can do once we've added that is go back to the terminal and again, I'm gonna rerun the test commands. Now we have three tests and all are passing. So we've added this subclass of simple test case. And there's a couple of things that we could note here. Notice the repetition of this call to self.client.get. We could factor that out into a setup method. And the second thing is something I'm gonna point out now, and that's the assert contains method. I want to go to the Django documentation for this method. So let's open that just now. And if you look at the signature of this, it takes the response and it takes some text but it also checks here for a status code of 200. 
So basically, this method asserts that a response produced the given status code and that text appears in its content, and text being whatever you pass as the second parameter. So that actually makes one of the tests that we've written redundant. We don't need to check for the 200 status code because that's the default in the assert contains method. So I'm gonna remove this test at the top, and just by removing that, we're preventing one request from the client to that endpoint. And that's going to help make our tests a little bit more performant if we get rid of redundant tests where possible. And what we can do in assert contains is explicitly state that the status code should be equal to 200, although it is the default. So I want to go back to the terminal and let's clear it out and rerun the tests. And you can see we have two tests and both are passing. So that's all for this video. What we've done here is we've written a subclass of simple test case that basically tests some static HTML content and tests things like response codes and the templates that are being used in that response. And this is an introduction to some of the assertions that Django adds using its test case classes that are not available in the unit test module. For example, assert template used and assert contains. In the next video, we're gonna write another view and we're gonna look at products and we're gonna see how we can write tests for views that actually use the database and have a template context that's being passed to the templates. We're gonna test various features of that and that's coming up in the next video.